And we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Soul Survivor Podcast. Ryan and I are back to discuss Survivor 46, Episode 7. Can't believe we're at Episode 7 already. Season's moving by quick. Uh, how are you, Ryan? What up, Dylan? Uh, no, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Great episode. You know, like you said, seven episodes in. We've said this before, but it started a little slow. But I will say the last few episodes have started to get better. This is almost kind of 45-esque where we had a slow start and had to ramp up, but then it got really good, especially in the early merge portion. So I'm very excited to talk about this episode with you. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, this was a good episode for sure. I think it might have been the best of the season. I, I know a lot of people were talking about that. I, I do think that uh, we got a very good split tribal episode. Um, and now we move on to the final 10. And I'm excited to talk about you know this week and how it impacts things going forward. Let me get your quick thoughts, by the way. So what do you think about this split tribal twist in the new era? Because I feel like I, I like it more than Mergatory, where only half the people are eligible. I like that everybody's vulnerable. And I also like that they did it this season at final 12 versus that final 10, where we missed the final nine vote. So it's I don't think it's a bad twist. I think it's fine. I think they did a better job this season with it. What do you think? I, I do think... It's good. I would I wouldn't have it every season though. That that's right. my that's my thing. Is like I think some seasons I would just merge later and not have it, and then maybe maybe like you mix in there like two people are going home tonight. Like, but I don't know. I I like it, but again, I wouldn't have it every season. It's so like predictable. They they were all acting like uh, shocked, like oh, two people are going home. Like nobody's surprised if it if it shows up at this point. So, um. I, I, but again, I, I thought it, I thought it was great. I want to complain about the twist. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't make every season the same format. That's really where I think a lot of people uh, are agreeing, right? It's like, you know, if you're going to mix, you can mix in these twists. That's fine. I just, I don't want to see it every single season, right? Maybe like once every three seasons or once, even in once every other season. So, um, but again, it produced a good episode. Let's get right into it. Um, we had Tim go home and Soda go home this, uh, this episode. Um, I, it sort of was a blindside. Um, were, let me, let me quickly, quickly ask you, were you blindsided by that? Did you think that soda was not going to go home? Cause I, I think Tim, like everyone kind of figured was going to be the one to go. I don't think anybody thought that like Hunter was going to be a real target here. Um, but what, what were your thoughts on the soda vote out? Were you blindsided? Did you see it coming? So the soda vote, I was not blindsided. I kind of expected it. If I had to guess, if you had told me, that Tevin changed his mind and it was Venus because Venus is kind of playing a very aggressive game and maybe he doesn't want that. It wouldn't have shocked me. Um, we can talk about whether the moves were good or not. Uh, but what I, was I surprised by soda? I was not totally surprised. And then I think with Ben and Tim, I guess because like they talked about both options, those could have went either way for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I, I kind of figured that it was going to be Tim strictly because like, I thought that the moment that they showed with Ben and Kenzie was probably going to put it over the edge. Uh, for like her um which it which it looks like it kind of did plus like i don't know tim we just we really didn't see a lot of him early on and i was just like i i could like see this being a spot where tim gets voted out and he tim went first so he's not on the jury so you know it is that it makes sense that they, that they didn't show tim that much but we did get a good tim episode we could talk about that in the, at the challenge and stuff but uh yeah. but yeah let's get into the votes first sure. um we could talk about was this the right move to vote out soda right was this the right move to add soda and what was the reasoning behind tevin you know being in the plan but putting down venus's name so yeah so i have a lot of thoughts on on both um on both tribal councils this one i have more uh thoughts on but i think it was the wrong move from tevin i really do i think basically you could you could debate me and you could tell me oh charlie was the right move or venus was the right move there and i could t look at both options and say i can make an argument for venus or charlie being the votes i can't make an argument for it being soda i just feel like she's not coming for tevin yet i mean is he right that she's a social threat he's correct people seem to like soda and when they get to final eight seven six could soda rise up and take numbers against tevin it's possible i i could see it but like at final 12 or i guess in this case 11 because they went to tribal council second and you're leaving charlie in the game who is a type pair with maria it also weakens sega it also is not part of your journey alliance and to his knowledge tevin does not know tim went out yet because they didn't see tim on the jury so they have no idea who left 
it makes complete sense to take out Charlie to weaken the, the duo Sega and a non journey member. And then furthermore, if you don't want to go for Charlie, fine. Then go for Venus, who's actively saying your name and trying to throw you and Hunter under the bus. I just don't get why he chose Soda here other than he was threatened by her and he wanted to make a big move. And then your other question was like, why did he vote for Venus? Probably just in case of the shot in the, in the dark or something. But Yeah, yeah. I think it wasn't the right move for Tevin. Uh, I think that I, – I don't think it was the right move. I don't think it was a harmful move, though, if that makes sense. Um, so I don't think a lot of people are like, well, like Soda was on your Soda was on his side. Why would he vote her out? To me, it was like I don't think he actually planned on working with her much longer. So I just think that him, you know, voting her out, I don't think it's gonna detriment his game too much. Um, but like, was it too early to make a move like that? Was it a necessary move? I don't think it was that necessary. I think he. To me, it looked like he, you know, made a move because he felt like making a move. Um, but again, I don't think it's going to be too much of a detriment to his game because I think he still has Hunter. Hunter's still with Q. Q still has Kenzie, Tiffany. So I do think he's like, Tevin's very insulated in that way. Um, is it possible that this move, people are like, wow, I thought Tevin and, so uh, Tevin and Soda were together. Maybe, you know, maybe he's a bigger threat than we thought. Is it possible that his insulation level goes down after this strictly because he moves up in terms of threat level? Yes, it's possible, but I still see Tevin as like in a pretty good spot. So to me, it's like I think it was more inqu inconsequential to his game than people think. But that's my early take. That obviously could change. I just think that I, I see your point where it's like it's not like it's disastrous. It's not like he messed up and took out his number one ally and Hunter way too soon. So I see your point there. I just think that it opens him up to more risk because when you go into next week now, it's final 10. And we can almost look at this as three trios. You could look at this as the Yanu three the Sega three and the Nami three. And then I say Nami three because Hunter Liz and Tevin, and then you have Venus who was kind of anti Tevin and Hunter. So that's why I feel like it's not, like you said, it's not disastrous, but it opens him up to risk because all it takes is for Venus to go float off to Sega or Yanu. And then she's like, Oh, you guys want Hunter or Tevin out? I'm on your side. So I think it just opens him up to more risk because I think soda would have been a number for him for at least a few more votes. But like you said, we don't know how it's going to shake out. Yeah. And, and we could talk about Venus, um, talk about an all over the place player. Um, but also a breath of fresh air and the fact that she's such an like authentic character. Um, and I enjoy watching her play, but I mean, it's her, in terms of like actual win equity, she's, she's beyond cooked. She has no chance to win, but I think if they, if she stays, you know, in the game longer, she could cause chaos, which is always fun. Um, that being said, I do want to throw out, like, I think they're doing a very good job with the edit of just, like, editing her in general, right? She's just, like, the agent of chaos. Nobody seems to like her. But one thing that I've I've thought was has been so interesting with Venus is that she always seems to have, like, a good plan. But, like, she can never, she never has any chance of, or any agency or any chance to have any agency in this game to make any single thing work. Um and it is pretty funny. Like she, she had the idea. Like, what if we vote out Tevin in a three, two, one? And I, in my, in my head, I was like, that's a pretty good plan. But <laughs> there's no way that anybody's listening to her, right? And like, I think that she's, she's a good strategic brain that is not the way she is approaching people is clearly rubbing them the wrong way. Like Maria was very turned off by her, and I was like, that was a good. It was a great plan, technically. Like, that would be a great spot to get out a big threat like that and have a huge blind. Like, that's a blind side that would obviously be hugely beneficial for her. Um, and there was just – and there was no way she was ever getting the numbers for that. So I, I think it's been very interesting to watch her, like, throw out these ideas that are like, wow, that was a good idea, but, like, no chance it ever happens. I think you, you summed it up perfectly. I, I think, like, it's what you said. She has great ideas. She has – the knowledge of a great player and she's she's great tv probably like with q the two most entertaining people to watch bar none um but like you said she just does not have the social capital to get numbers on her side and the three two one to take out tevin would be a really great plan we would love to see it um pulling off a Suri esque move but she just can't get people on her side because of how she approaches people maria doesn't like her her whole former tribe doesn't seem to like her um you know, Q I, I, in that secret scene that we got that got deleted that we're very upset about. Um, Q is also like I, Venus is a snake. I can't trust her. So she has no ability to get people on her side 
And, you know, she should also realize that when Charlie's saying to her, like, you know, I'm good. And she's like, you're the lone Sega member. Like, you don't want to work with me? That's fine. Take your chance, Charlie. That should signal to her, like, oh, if the one guy in the outs is not reaching out to me, maybe, like, there's something not right here. And I think that that was actually smart on Charlie's part because he's like, I'm kind of, like, in a fine spot. I'm just going to keep quiet and let Venus and Soda kind of shoot for each other because Charlie realizes, like, oh, if I say to Venus... I want to work with you and that gets around the island venus is like persona non grata i don't want to work with her so it's like i think i feel bad for venus because she's great tv and like you said she has the right mindset for the game she just does not have the agency to get any traction at all yeah i she has no agency and i mean we we heard at the beginning of the season jeff was like one of you guys cannot you know no, there are people on this on this uh in on the season that cannot win this game you're standing here right now and just because of the way you are you may have no chance to win and that was like to me that is that is what venus is right now she has no chance to win because she has no relationships um but she's still trying to navigate the game and you know there's potentially still motivation for others to keep her in which is very interesting and and i'm excited to see how everything plays out with venus we were texting about that you me and your brother and at, at first i was i, I remember that scene again and Jeff was like, there's one of you who just who can't win. And, and as the season has gone on, I'm like, that's a hint. So at first I'm like, oh, it's Banu. People are like, you know, no one's going to vote for Banu in the end. That obviously didn't happen. I then thought it was Liz, but actually Liz has be actually become kind of more interesting in these last few weeks. I feel like Liz has actually kind of grown on me a little bit in these last few weeks. I'm like, so I don't think it's Liz. And now after seeing every single person on the Merge Tribe just be like, I, I don't want to deal with Venus, I'm like, I have a sneaking suspicion Venus might be our final three goats, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it is it is interesting, and I'm sure we'll have a conversation if she stays in the game. Like, is she worth keeping in the game? Obviously, you have the fact that she's an agent of chaos. She could vote anyone out. She will go for anybody. But you also have the sense, like, I could beat her in the end. Um, and then you also have the sense, like, well, if everyone wants to bring her to the end, is it worth keeping her around? Because, you know, then it's one less spot for me in the final three. So, um, interesting. Uh, I'm sure we'll have the conversation a lot more times this season, but uh, yeah, we could, I'm trying to think um, we could, I, let's, let's talk about the other group a little bit also. Um, actually, no, before we, before we move to the other group, sure. um, I do want to ch uh, touch on Charlie and Maria a little bit mm -hmm. um, because we haven't really spoke about them a lot, but sneakily, they might be coming the power duo of the season. Like I, I, I don't not, I'm not too sure about that yet, but they are, really tight and nobody seems to pick up on the fact that they're very tight yeah no i have to give them them credit obviously the edit only shows us so much um and we often don't see the great job people are doing but yeah they must be doing a really excellent job keeping their duo a secret people must not see them that, as that close and even though people might be scared of sega maybe they're like oh but we can still pull in charlie and maria and let's get rid of ben and tim at some point and obviously they got rid of mariah too i mean Dylan, we said this earlier, the fact that they were they were at a 4-2 deficit and Charlie was dead to rights. He had no idol, no advantages. All he could do was a one and six shot in the dark and Tevin could take out a pair and weaken Siga and a non-journey person if that alliance is real. I cannot believe they did not go for Charlie here. And the one thing that I just don't understand, Dylan, is like in terms of the, the logic – he says, I want to work with Charlie because Charlie is a loyal number. But if Charlie's a loyal player, he would be loyal to Sega. So if he's loyal to you, then he's not loyal to them, which means he's not a loyal player. I, I just don't see how him thinking that Charlie is a great ally for him would make more sense than keeping Soda for right now. I mean, again, like maybe Soda was going to go for him eventually, but I just feel like Charlie is such a dangerous player. You don't want to let that type of player get too deep into the game. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to figure out if they're seeing a different, like they're seeing Charlie is differently than we are. Like I think for from our standpoint, Charlie's very smart, very strategic, very good player. And from their standpoint, I'm wondering if they're kind of just, or at least Heaven is just seeing him as like, oh, he's you know a number for me that's gonna be loyal and just like you know the the like you know young young kid uh, who who will stay loyal and just like you know be a good number for me. Like I don't. I don't know what the process was with his thoughts there. Like um, I do think theoret in a theoretical situation, like, again, I, I think it was an inconsequential vote, like I said, for Tevin's game, but 
theoretically the better move was probably just to vote out Charlie and just, and we can, we can see even more, but I, at this point, he's so the, the cracks, as, as they've been saying, the cracks all over NAMI were pretty, pretty massive to the point where he was so ready and all of NAMI was pretty much so ready to just vote against each other that there wasn't even a thought basically to, to vote at Sega, which was pretty crazy. And I think the only really thing that I could criticize Charlie for in this game so far is at the very beginning of this episode when he admitted that he voted for Venus. Um, I thought that was really unnecessary. Like he, he didn't need to do it. There's so many people there that easily could have, you know, thrown the vote that I felt like, you know, he kind of just like caved because she was like trying to figure it out and she was pinning it on soda. And like, that was the point. It was like, you know, you want her to pin it on soda, but, and, and now that soda's out of the game, it, it's like, he could have just, it could have all been buried, but he admitted it, which I didn't, I didn't think that was a great move. But other than that, like I, Charlie's been shown to be pretty strategic and pretty good player. So I'm and not that's sure. A really good you're, point. you're right. You're, I was going to say, you're, you're right about uh, Tevin's misperception, like misperception of him. Well, but I, I, I want to touch upon what you just said, where it's like, you know, there's a misperception about Charlie, but maybe we should be giving Charlie credit for creating that perception or misperception. Because while we're at the start of the episode, like, like you just mentioned, because Charlie admits to that, which again, I, at first I was like, is there any strategy behind this? And then I think he's like, just no, I just wanted to kind of admit it. I felt bad. Um, wasn't great. But I love how he approaches Q, because I think if you figure out the Q equation, even though Q might be getting a little bossy and may not be long for this game, unfortunately. Um, you have to approach Q in the Banu way where it's like Q's your coach, Q's your mentor, Q's going to teach teach you things. And like Banu did that. And even though Banu got a little bit too out of hand and Q couldn't do it anymore, he was going to try to work with Banu and get rid of Kenzie. And I think Charlie did the same thing where Charlie's like, oh, you know what? Like I admit this vote. And Q's like, you, you can't be doing that, Charlie. You can't be admitting this stuff. And instead of Charlie being like, you know, Q, I'm an adult, like, don't talk to me that way. Or like, I know what I'm doing. Charlie's like, you're right, Q, you're right. I, I can't be spilling secrets. Like, he's kind of just lower, kind of like the whole Tony, like lowering his threat level. I feel like Charlie's like making himself appear non-threatening. He's talking about Taylor Swift. I just don't, I think if you look at like Survivor Nerds and you see him versus Drew, and again, maybe it's the height, maybe it's the glasses. Drew just comes off as like more, I guess, scary from like a strategic threat standpoint from last season where I feel like Charlie does not give off that same vibe. And I think Charlie might be doing a good job at just making himself appear very flexible to kind of work with. So. Yeah. I, I think that's a great point with about Q especially is like, if you're working with Q, the best thing you could do is kind of just like feed his ego. Right. And be like, Oh, you're right. You're right. And then like, he'll, you know, he'll want to work with you more. Um, and you'll, you'll appear like, basically less threatening to him. So I, I think that that was, that was a great call by you and a great move by him. Uh, now talking about Q let's, you know, segue perfect segue into group one here. Um, so we had group one, which was uh, Kenzie Q Tiffany Hunter, Ben and Tim. What, by the way, what an interesting split this was. You have all three Yanu on the same, same split, right? Which, what were the odds of that? I, we said last podcast, we were like, you know, like, it could be trouble for for Yanu if they get split up, but they all get put together. And now all of a sudden you have the majority because you have Hunter and then you have uh, Ben and Tim. So it's a 3-2-1 split between the tribes. And all of a sudden Yanu, who has not had the numbers, uh, or I should say they've not had any power like all game. <laughs> they have they have power, you know? So that was very, very interesting split. Um, I think from, you know, I think the right they, they made the right move to – you know, target, I think, a Sega here, at least from the standpoint of the fact, and again, we could talk about whether it was probably worth taking a shot at Hunter or not. I think yeah. from their standpoint where they have Hunter as a number, mm -hmm. they need to keep him in. Um, so I'm curious your thoughts there. Did you, do you think that they should have targeted Hunter or if they should have, or it was the right move to go with Sega? Because I'm under mm -hmm. the impression that going for Sega from the out of three standpoint was the yeah. right so this one is very interesting to me, and I would love to hear, hear your thoughts too, because I think the Soto one is more clear to me with that. It's, it's in my opinion, the wrong move for Tevin. Should have went for Charlie or or uh, um, Venus. With this one, because we can debate whether it was made, made more sense for Ben and Tim, I think in a perfect scenario, I agree with you. I think it may have been the perfect move to get rid of Hunter here because you obviously weaken, te you weaken Tevin and Hunter, you weaken Nami. They have a lot more cracks, yes, but like I think with Hunter's idol – with hunters being a physical threat and with Tevin being a social threat that's and also with them having Liz in their pocket that's a very very scary tr trio in the game 
But in my mind, it was never going to happen. The one thing that the edit has not really shown us is that Q and Hunter are both from Mississippi. Like, obviously, they both are in the Journey 6 Alliance, but they are both from the same state. And in pregame, again, and these are not, not like really spoilers, but in pregame interviews, when they're like, oh, who are you liking at Ponderosa so far? They're like, oh, there's another guy here from Mississippi. I like him a lot. So, and that's, and that, that might just be like, be like a Southern thing where, you know, Southern folks stick together, where it's like they want to work together as fellow people from Mississippi. So, in my mind, even though it makes perfect sense to go for Hunter to weaken Hunter and Tevin, Q was never going to let it happen. Like the only way that could have happened is if T Tiffany and Kenzie went rogue and teamed up with uh, Ben and Tim to get rid of Hunter behind Q's back, which I don't think was going to happen. But like that was the only way because Q was never going to, I think, vote for Hunter here. So I think our debate kind of could be around like, was Ben or Tim the right move? Yeah, yeah. I that That's that's also a good debate. So let's get there. Um, ben or Tim, I think, again, based on what we were shown, um, easily the right move to go for tim um i don't think it's close like I, I think tim has shown that he is definitely a bit of a wild card in the sense that i i already think that they got massive red flags for him when he didn't disclose the 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 journey alliance right and absolutely that was a red flag and then they kind of got a sense that he was just like and then i mean even even look right now to start this to start this uh scrambling per se when they got back from the challenge he's like oh we have to go from hunter and then q was like what are you talking about like we just made this alliance last week so it's like he kind of showed that he was a wild card he was not afraid to vote anybody out and i think that that scared mm -hmm. the rest of the people there and yeah. rightfully so i think tim based on what we saw of him he seemed like he was somebody who was not gonna be afraid to vote anybody out who was not really gonna go with the numbers and kind of just play his own game and that's a dangerous thing so i think it was absolutely the right move uh to vote at Tim, let alone the fact that Ben seemingly has a better relationship. If you're talking about the relationship with the rest of the Yanu three, at least Kenzie, that's a, a major part. So from her perspective, I think it was a no brainer to keep Ben uh, and vote at Tim. I think I agree with you. I think that Tim is the right move. The only reason to get rid of Ben here, I think is because he's a very likable guy. He's a social threat and maybe you're kind of scared of him. So you could get rid of him here. But like you mentioned, Tim is, very non-committal he wants to keep his options open with his sega folks with the journey six perhaps and he is not giving up a lot of information i think tiffany brings up the only other good point where it's like well tim is so transparent that i can kind of see what he's doing where i can't really see what ben's doing so maybe ben is more threatening but i think C steven sums it up well on rob's podcast where it's like when you're in the game and you're looking to make inroads with somebody and they're they're not giving you information and they're kind of being very cagey you pick up on that and it's like if i come to you and on different occasions i'm like oh should we go for this person or what are you thinking you're like i don't know i kind of want to just stick with this let's kind of see how it plays out I, i'm not going to be open to trusting you and working with you if there's not an exchange of information and i think ben just i'm sorry now tim was very just clear and trying to keep his sega option open and i just think in the game if you're q like I said, what does Q want? Q wants someone who's going to go to him, look for advice, look to kind of agree with him. And if you're Mariah or if you're Tim and you're kind of like pushing against what Q's thinking, it's just not going to work. And I and I think Tim, unfortunately, got into a spot where it's like he doesn't want to give up information. He said in his exit press, actually, Dylan, that like the reason he said Maria's name for his plus one rather than Ben was because he didn't want to give up his real information. He's like, oh, I trust Maria. I like her. But my real number one is Ben, but I'm not going to give them that information, which I could see Tim's point, but you can't be too cagey. You have to give people some information in order for them to trust you. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. I mean, he when when you're when you're trying to work with somebody who's not forthcoming with information, it's it's a basically an impossible task. So um I think I think it was the right move uh to vote out Tim here. Um and then I mean other and, and other than that, I think um with this group. It, it was interesting, right? Because I think, you know, it's pretty clear from this episode that a lot of the Q is starting to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Um, so I think, you know, maybe potentially foreshadowing for the future. Um, you know, we think about it. We had Charlie early in the episode who was like, you know, I need to go after Q. Like, I can't deal with this anymore. And then you have Kenzie and Tiffany who are his one and two who are literally like, uh, like this i don't know how much longer this could go on like this is something to watch out for uh like q oh. um 
like he he'll go and i think one thing that's been so interesting with q is he literally will come up with a plan go off with somebody else talk to somebody else and then come back and be like no this is this is the plan now and he he does that without discuss even discussing it like instead of him approaching tiffany and kenzie and being like hey just had this conversation with this person um you know should we potentially consider switching the vote or do you guys want to stay on it? Instead, he's like, the vote is this person now without even discussing it. And I think that's why he's been so great. And he's probably my favorite player on the season so far. Cause I think he's just unbelievable TV and it's, in, it's, in, it's just incredible to watch. But I think for sure that is a red flag for his allies and probably the rest of the people in the game also. So it's something to watch out for. No, I mean, you make a, you make a great point. Like you can't just, I mean, if you want to make make decisions, like that's fine because other other players might see you as kind of more of a shield for them. But like, for you to go to other people and then come back and say, actually, no, this is the plan, rather than saying, "Hey, Ben just told me this. Should we be worried? Should we flip?" Like, that's not the right way to approach people, especially not people that are like Tiffany and Kenzie, who are strong players that don't want to be bossed around. So, no, I think that you're right. The writing's kind of on the wall for Q, where. If he makes it to the end, I think he could easily win. I just don't know if at this point at Final 10, if he gave himself enough runway, I think people are going to start to come for him very soon. Definitely within the next few weeks, if not next week. So my question for you, Dylan, would be like, if if, if a plan is happening, obviously if Charlie gets the numbers, maybe Q's already screwed. But my question for you would be like, should Tiffany and Kenzie jump on this move to get rid of Q? Or do you feel like how soon is too soon? Because I feel like, Final 10 is still a little too soon to get rid of Q for them. Maybe like in the next couple of weeks, like final eight or seven, but in survivor timing doesn't always match up. So when is it too soon to go for Q if you're Tiffany and Kenzie? E- yes, it's too soon. Um, I think the right, you, you kind of want to go. It, it Three people is, is it's strong at this point, right? You, there's only the final 10, 10. It's almost a third of the tribe. Yeah. So. It's only 10 people left. And if you have three people in an alliance, you really only need to bring it. I mean, you only need to bring in two more people to at least force a five, five. So it shouldn't be that hard for them to get a majority. So I would ride this out for at least two or three more votes probably. And then I think you make the move, but it's like, you also want to make sure he doesn't see it coming. So probably I'd say probably final eight is when you can make it, but I think 10 is, is too soon. So We'll see. I that I feel like that's. I mean, eventually, that's. This is going to end up being Q's downfall. But um, it's just a question of when, uh, not if, in my opinion. Um, I think we and we can keep talking about Q. What is so funny is how he's like. I purposely jumped off the platform because I don't want to show my challenge prowess early. Um, which, in theory, is not. A, it's first of all, I think a lot of people thought that he was just BSing, which is hilarious. And then the other thing is um that's funny about it is like if i mean i think in a theoretical situation where he's a better social player it's something that could like be a smart thing but in the situation where like like already people are already people are onto him like he like how do i describe it like his threat level is already high because he's he's bossing people around he doesn't see that he that he's acting that way right so he doesn't know that his threat level is high so he thinks he's hiding his threat level by like, you know, making it seem like he's not going to challenge us yet. His threat level is already high because he's maneuvering so many moves and just like being a bossy person, which is so funny. It's just like, this is why Q is unbelievable. I mean, he's unbel- unbelievable in confessions, uh, confessionals. He's um, extremely smart. We know like he's really like, he's a top, literally a top real estate guy in the entire US. Like he's a smart guy for sure. Um, and yet what gets in his way is the fact that he doesn't realize like, the way that the way he's like interacting with people might be like bothersome or come off as bossy. And as a result, like his ego might end up being his downfall in this game, which is so funny, but he's just, he's one of the best characters we've had at this new era in my opinion. He's a joy to watch every week. I I completely agree. I mean, we talk about this all the time that our favorite players to watch are definitely Q and Venus. And then then Tiff, I would say Tiffany's like my third, but like, watching Q is so much fun. I'm so upset that we didn't see that confessional. If you, if you all didn't see that are watching, go to YouTube and look up um, episode seven secret scenes to see Q's confessional perception of each and every person on the tribe. And it's hysterical. I'm so upset they cut it out. Um, But you're right. I think the edits almost poking fun at Q because you look at him, former quarterback or wide receiver for uh, Ole Miss. um, He's obviously a very physical guy. 
but he's not getting targeted for his physicality. He's getting targeted because of his, you know, bossy nature and how he's kind of running alliances. And it also pokes fun at him because he's like, oh, you know, no, listen, we can't get rid of Hunter Tim because you need someone that can go up against him in challenges. You haven't gone up against him in anything and you haven't won against Hunter. And you're also jumping off challenges as well. And you haven't proved Q that you can beat Hunter in anything. So I find that I find that so funny. Then you get the whole thing early in the season where he's like t- saying to the tribe, like, I-, I messed up the challenge. You can vote me out and stuff. So Q's relationship with challenges has been a very funny uh, arc to watch this season. And we'll see if he ever is able to match up to Hunter or if he keeps saying to people, you need me in the game to get rid of Hunter. And it's like, you haven't beaten Hunter in one thing yet. So we'll see what happens. And then in the confessional, he's like, he like, he likes like, um, he's like, Hunter is, Hunter's the best challenge player on this season. The biggest challenge threat. Debatable. <laughs> he's like, it's, debatable. Debatable. Yeah. it's just so, so funny. So funny. So funny. And that's like the athlete in him talking, which is, which is so funny mm-hmm. um, that he doesn't think anybody's better than him yet. He sees that somebody's better than him. So it is, it is really funny to watch. And let, let's talk about this immunity challenge again. Oh, oh that way. Great immunity challenge. I, uh, not, I, I wouldn't say the actual challenge itself, but the way that the way the challenge was played was absolutely hilarious um the interactions during this were it felt very old school almost something we don't really get that often um players talking in the middle of challenge in, of the challenge uh uh tim talking to jeff like it, it was just it had it had everything from that standpoint and i think those are like the character moments that you know before they before they moved to 90 minutes we didn't we didn't see a ton of that stuff um and I think, and honestly, at the beginning of the new era, like they just kind of took a lot of that stuff out and they were focusing it more on like the game bot stuff. And those are like the character moments that are, that they need to put in and like, I'm loving it. So it, it what a great, what a great challenge it was. Yeah, no, I mean, this challenge, like Jeff said, was the most fun that he's had in a challenge in, in a couple seasons. It's the most I've laughed out loud at a challenge or at Survivor in the last few seasons. Um this was still this was amazing. I've actually gone back and watched the challenge like one or two times, and I never go back to watch challenges really ever. But this was insane. Um, like you said, we've seen this challenge before. It's called Bermuda Triangle, where they're in those triangles in the water. We've seen this since like Caramoan. Um, so we've seen it for a couple seasons now. But this is why I think endurance challenges are so fun. And, I, and I've seen people online say that they're, they're getting kind of tired of like all the obstacle courses, which is like you need the obstacle courses in the pre-merge just because you need those big challenge sets, which I understand. But once we get to merge, we need these endurance challenges where we can see these character moments. I mean, you and I love that moment with Christian and David versus Goliath, where he's just talking with Jeff for five hours. Like you get these character moments, like you said, when we have 20, 30 minutes, an hour for people to just like sit and do nothing other than fight in the challenge. And you get the alphabet game, which was funny. You get the shout outs from Tim. You get the what up, Jeff. So it was just such a funny moment. Um, love this challenge. And I really hope we see more of these endurance challenges that go on for more than like 30 minutes so we can see people really just interact. One critique with the challenge itself. Um, th- they got to They got to like, they got to make it so that they're not moving to one foot so early. Just let them stand up there for like two hours like they used to do and th- then go to one foot after like two or three hours. I, I think that, that was the one thing. It was like after like 30 minutes, they were like, all right, one foot now. Um, so, I mean, I know that with the filming schedule, it probably is more difficult now, but we we need the time elapsed like three hours back on our screen. Well, you know what's funny? I actually saw two theories and I'm curious which one you agree with. The first theory that I saw was – um because the water was like so calm like jeff even said like we did this in 42 and like everybody fell off within five minutes and at this time the water is better i saw two theories the first theory was that they actually started at the bottom but because it no one fell off and it was so easy they actually cut though and i don't think this is the case because they would have shown the elapsed time but i saw a theory that they cut the first two segments and they started on the third or the other theory that I saw is that because the water was so calm, Jeff is like, you know what? Let's make it interesting. Let's start at the third rung and then we'll go to the top one. So I don't know which one you believe, but I could see the like the easy conditions of the water being a factor of why they didn't like show us the first two stages. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think they probably started the lower lowest and then just edited it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I still think the elapsed time was what it said. So I think, I think it's just, you know, you got to uh, 
maybe maybe it was a little bit longer than we were led on to believe, but I, I think you know I used to love that used to be like one of my favorite things is like when you get Christian up there for five hours, when you get uh you know hanging on the pole for 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 three hours, like that that's that's a type of thing that I love. Um, so would love to have longer endurance challenges. I think, I think it's tough because I think if, if people say like, what's the reason why they haven't been longer, I don't think it's because of the editing or the shortened seasons. I think it's actually because with them getting less food and supplies or just more exhausted, so they just can't do it as much. But like, you're right. If you want to give them endurance challenges that will go on for hours, I know last gasp went on for a while with Owen and Carla, but like this challenge in the water can go on for a little bit, but if you just want like a good old fashioned endurance challenge. Just bring back the one from Micronesian Heroes versus Villains, where you have to just like hold your arm up for you know with the uh, with the water above your head. The, the one that Parvati won after like yeah. five hours. Just just do that because like it takes nothing to create. Just have the arm above your head. Give people like um, even if it's like rice and beans. Give people like food incentives to jump off. And that one's not very like physically demanding, Jeff. So just like do that, and you'll have a challenge that goes on for four hours. Yeah, because, that, because that, 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 that challenge is like just is pure will. It's all it is. It's just pure will. Yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. Get we got we need more of those. So we'd love to see it come back. Um, let's move on now. I let's talk about what we see happening going forward here. Sure. Um, I think we're in an interesting spot. Final ten. Final ten is always a massive vote. Um, it looks like, and and maybe I'm wrong. It looks like we're we have a majority of some some kind of form of the Yanu three and then Nami kind of working together. Um, I think now that Soda's out, um, it's just Nami minus V it's Tevin Hunter and Liz will be the three. And then Venus is just like on her own. So I think that's the six, right. That you have for fight for that theoretically should be the six. So the question is, or is that six going to one stick together? And two, is that six, you know, six is a majority in, in final 10. Is that six going to one stick together? And two, is that six going to just like be like we can't deal with Venus that she's the easy vote and just vote her out, or are they going to try to take a shot at another Sega, or is a blindside coming on one of the six? So this is very interesting because I can see this going in a lot of different ways, like you mentioned, because you have the the four three three of Nami Sega Yanu, but like you you mentioned, Venus is kind of not really with Nami; she's kind of a free agent. So it's three groups of three, and Venus kind of floating, and whoever maybe can get Venus can get a lot of power. I mean, this could go in so many different ways, Dylan. Like, when they all get back to camp and they see that Tim was voted out, are Hunter and Q going to say, oh, you guys voted out? I'm sorry, not Hunter and Q. I'm sorry. Um, is Maria going to say, and Tevin going to say, oh, you guys voted out Tim. The journey six is dead. Now we're going to move on. Or because Tim was so, like you said, non-committal to start, are Hunter and Q going to say, it's unfortunate we don't have the journey six, but we never really trusted Tim anyway. We like Maria. Maybe we'll just do a, a journey four. Me, me meaning <laughs> Tevin, Hunter, uh, Q, and Tiffany. Maybe they roll forward. So maybe it's the journey four without Maria now. You also could see a scenario, like you said, where Q gets bossy. And I hope this is not the case because I think it's a bad move for them. But I could see a scenario where Q gets bossy. T Tiffany and Kenzie say, you know what? We can't do this anymore. It's also her Hunter. Let's go with Charlie and Maria and let's get rid of Q now. I could see that happening. Um, and also, even though you're right that maybe Nami and Yanu are going to still work against Siga, we've lost three in a row. Maria, I'm sorry, not Maria, Mariah, uh, Tim, and technically Jem before Merge. But Siga's lost three people in a row before Soda. They're kind of on their heels now. So it's like, yeah, you could go for Siga, but it's like, ooh, maybe you could take a bigger shot at Nami. So I could see next week going in a lot of different ways. I mean, the only person that I think could be safe next week, ironically, is someone like Liz. I feel like no one's going to go for Liz right now at Final 10. But I could see like a lot of other people being votes next week. Yeah, and something just came to my head. I sure. think if you're – I think the best move – like if you're – we saw something last season that I thought was so interesting, right? Emily was – with nobody and then all of a sudden caleb was like well i think this is an opportunity for me to use emily as a number to get myself further in the game i think venus nobody wants to work with her but yet she presents such a massive opportunity for everybody as the fact that in a three 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 she is a number so it's like who could i see bringing in venus in my opinion is the is the people that we have not seen interact with her yet right 
Maria seems completely shut down to the idea of working with her. Nope. Tevin is done with that. I think my prediction is that I think Kenzie and Tiffany end up bringing in Venus as a number. Um, it just, to me, it makes sense. They're like, you heard that Venus kind of wants to work with like women. Like she had that, like, like she didn't want to get rid of women. Um, she wants to maybe work with others. Uh, and then I think, you know, we're hearing the fact that like Tiffany and Kenzie might be open to the idea of getting rid of Q. Well, if you're interested in getting rid of Q down the line, like you got to get somebody else in the fold, right? So that you could get rid of Q and not hurt yourself too much. To me, it seems like a perfect match um, for them to for them to like pair up with Venus and Alliance. So I would not be surprised if Venus votes with Yanu this week. Um it seems like the natural move. And I think that if she's going to catch on somewhere to bring herself further in the game, it is with Kenzie and Tiffany. I think it's a no brainer for both sides. Well, I think you're right that Tiffany and Kenzie are the only people left in the game that have not actively had a problem with her. Like you mentioned, Tiff, uh, Tevin, Hunter, Liz, Tevin, Hunter, Liz, Maria, Charlie. I mean, Ben hasn't really reacted to Venus, but I don't, I don't think Ben is kind of feeling great about Venus. So Everyone else in the game, and Q doesn't like Venus, so everyone else in the game does not want to work with her. I could see the only two people that are options for her would be Tiff and Kenzie, and the girls could, could get something going. Um, maybe Yanu sticks together with Q, and then that becomes like a Yanu 4 situation. I think Twitter would love a Yanu 3 plus Venus alliance, or an all-women's alliance Twitter would love. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's so interesting because it's like Venus has to be careful too because Venus, like we see, wants to make big, big moves. And she's not afraid of just saying whatever to people. Like, I could see her going to Tiffany and Kenzie and maybe even Q and saying, hey, guys, I know I'm former Nami, but we can get rid of Hunter or Tevin here. And I could see Q saying, I am not getting rid of Tevin or Hunter at this point. Venus, you have to go. And then it's like, now Venus is in a bad spot again, just because she's not seeing, like Maria said, how she's approaching people or she's not really aware of, like, the social dynamics and people are going to just discounter for it so she's going to go with maybe tiffany and kenzie like you mentioned but is she going to throw out a sega's name that will work or is she going to throw out you know T tevin and hunter and then she gets targeted again so i don't know <laughs> yeah that it also right you're right it depends on whether venus could uh finally read the room correctly um that'll that'll always be the question um anything else you want to touch on before we head out for the day yeah let me see we don't have any questions in the chat if you are watching feel free to put them in before we wrap up um we already talked about next week and what we could see. I, again, I think really, other than someone like Liz, who I don't see being a target, I could really just see anybody else's name coming up here based on like how things shake up. Um, I think, like you said, the big question of the week is going to be, do does Q continue to get on people's nerves? And do Tiffany and Kenzie pull the trigger? Or do they say, no, let's wait another week or two? I think that's the big question that we saw here. Um, in terms of people's like stocks going up or down, I would say like, you know, Q's stock is trending down a bit. Venus's stock is obviously tre trending down continuously. Um, shockingly, I feel like Liz's stock is going up. I'm not, I don't know if I could see Liz as the winner of the season just because of what we saw earlier with her like billionaire comments. But I mean, this was a great, a great week for Liz. Liz kind of got Soda out of the game. Liz does not like Soda at all. I don't think we saw in the edits how much Liz did not like Soda. So this was great for Liz. And also for Hunter. Hunter has an idol that no one knows about, not even Tevin. And Hunter now is like, oh, Tevin has to get close to me because he just took out Soda. So Liz stock and Hunter stock rising up. So agreed, agreed on all fronts. Yeah, Hunter. Uh, we'll see if uh, he's clearly. The, I would say the next time he does not win immunity, he's playing that idol. Like I, I, I would. He almost. I thought he was maybe going to play it uh, this this tribal, but um, Hunter's in a really good spot with that idol because if he loses, he eventually will be a target. Um, probably very soon. So. Great spot with the idol and nobody knowing about knowing about it. I think he ends up making a big move with that idol somewhere in the season. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what happens. One last thing I forgot that we can wrap up. And I usually do this in our notes and I actually completely forgot the season. Um, I usually put a little tally in the notes of what our advantage count is like. So I'm going to start doing that next week because I completely forgot. Um, so in this point in the game, just remind me, Tiffany has an idol. Right. Hunter um, has an idol. Mm -hmm. The Sega idol is dead because Jem left with it. Right. There's only two idols in the game, and the only other advantage is Tevin's extra vote. Does anyone else have an extra vote? I think that's it. I think that's it. I'll I'm go not... back and look. I don't think Ben does. Not Charlie. Liz has not. Yeah, I think I think it's just literally two idols and an extra vote is all we have. 
Yeah, not a lot of advantages. Which is so good. <laughs> which is a yeah. good thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think I think that's it, which is good. So all right. I think that's it. Right. I think this is a great episode, Dylan. Yep, yep. Great episode. Looking forward to this week. And we will see everybody around this time next week. Yeah, we'll see you for final 10 next week. Uh grab your torches and head back to camp. Good night. <laughs>